The following is a presentation of Nova Hackers. Brought to you by ComputeCycle. All right, great. Uh, good to be back up here, guys. Um, I decided that I hadn't talked in a while, and I... Slacker. Pardon? Slacker. Slacker, yes, I, I admit it. So after much careful consideration and um, a lot of thought, I decided to do my talk on the highly technical, uh, very intricate and highly important concept of coffee. Um, actually, this came out of a discussion on the list some point earlier this year. Um, and so, the, uh, so really, the whole thought was, hey, um, all about coffee. How much coffee do we drink? And why do we drink coffee? And is cof too much coffee bad for us? And is coffee really the most popular drink on the planet? Well, I don't know. And who cares? <laughs> we love and need our coffee. I mean, where do we get our coffee? We get it from Starbucks, from the neighborhood coffee shop, Caribou, McDonald's, Dunkin' Donuts, home, and the, well, at last desperation, the office coffee pot, obviously. <laughs> Um, it's only if we're really desperate. And how do we make it? Well, various and sundry as home devices, um, a Chemex, coffee press, AeroPress, vacuum pot if you're really kind of exclusive. And uh, no. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so. <laughs> Out of all of those options, does anyone really get good coffee? Or are we just hoping that we have the right formula each time? Um, and then when we go through the effort of trying to actually create a better cup of coffee, people jeer and call us names. I'm called a coffee snob. My sister-in-law called me a coffee elitist even. I was like, oh my god. lived in Washington State, have you? Uh, no, so I... <laughs> Wow. No. I so I haven't that yeah, so the that I so apparently I have some ways to go yet, which is good because considering maybe some of this, but I, I want you guys to remember that being called a coffee snob for wanting good coffee is like being called a laundry snob for wanting clean socks. So uh. <laughs> um, so we have to think about really what goes into making a good cup of coffee. Uh, well, first there's the soil. And I did, this was research. This isn't just off the top of my head. Soil, the weather, um, the gardener, the climate, the altitude, the, um, how it's harvested, how it's processed, how it's roasted, how it's stored, how it's made. Hey, that's a lot of stuff that you have to really remember right there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot in there. But we're really going to focus on the things that we here, you and I, usually can control the most. That is the beans and the brewing. Yes, you can also roast your beans, but that's a whole nother rabbit hole that would require a lot more time, and I'm not going to go down there. <laughs> so. Um, so the first thing that comes under your control really is beans, is your grinds. You buy beans. Don't buy grinds, buy beans. And you want to get them ideally within uh, about 14 days of their actual roasting. So that means you got to buy beans that have roasted on date. So you know exactly, you know, how long it's been since they were, they were cooked up. And that also, well, you also know how long you have before those things really start tailing off. In, uh, in their freshness. So where should you get your coffee? From the store? No. Maybe you think, well, I'm pretty good. I'll get it from Starbucks or Caribou. Uh, maybe. They usually don't have roasted on dates, but sometimes in a pinch. Um, so you got your beans. You know they've been roasted recently and you keep them where in a funky cool container? No. <laughs> it, the danger is you want to avoid certain things. Air moisture, heat, and light, because those things kill your freshness. So you store them in an airtight, opaque container that's in a cool, dry location. This is going to keep your beans the freshest, the longest. And so now you have beans, you've, they're fresh, they're stored properly, now you want to make them into grinds. 
There are two methods to do this. You can use a burr grinder or a blade grinder. The burr is on your left and the blade is on your right. Burr wins every time. In fact, everything I've read said if you don't do anything else, and employ any methods, at least buy beans and spend your money on a good burr grinder. That will get you, uh, because consistent size grinds give you more consistent and uniform uh, methods, uh, ability to extract from your, uh, uh, the coffee from your grinds. Now, uh, just a minute, Jenna. Um, now, if you can't get a burr grinder, you can use a blade, it just know that you're, you're going to have inconsistent sizes. Yes? I just want to say you left out a perfect opportunity to say, on your left, my right. Uh, you're right, I did. <laughs> the thing about a blade grinder is to cook the beans. Mm. You start to cook the beans. Right, because of the friction. Flavor only if you over grind. So, Grind good point. <laughs> 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 Uh, you open it, close it pretty qu as quickly as possible, yeah. as I do. <laughs> what, what about using the silica gel? To be honest, um, one of the things I did read was that you can actually, when you first buy your beans, you can split if you know, well, I'm not going to use these beans every day, so you split the beans into two to three day packages and then use each one individually. I'm not quite sure I'm ready for that much OCD, but there you go. If you have, uh, if you really want to go that far, go right ahead. So I've got a question. I really enjoy this presentation, but how in the heck are you doing this with a can of Coke in there? <laughs> <laughs> Mainly because I was so I didn't hadn't drank my coffee this morning, and I left all my demo stuff at home. <laughs> uh, like four hours to make this stuff. <laughs> 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 well, I, so the scary thing is I haven't even got to the brewing yet, so let's get move on, let's get there. So let's just talk about grinds real quick. Um, next slide, just real quick demo on the size of your grinds and where you're using them from. You can get really coarse grinds and big chunks to really fine grinds and different, depending on what method of brewing, depends on what size grinds you want. Uh, cold brewing, if you're doing a cold brew, the, the extra coarse. Um, little less coarse, you're looking for your French press. Um, cupping is something those, those people in Seattle do because that's how they taste coffee and that's sort of like sipping with wine. It's crazy. Um, so... Pump the beans. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. So, uh, moving on. <laughs> um, you get to your medium grinds, you're looking at your drip pots, uh, your little little finer, you're getting your pour overs, your vacuum pots, your um, siphon brewers. Uh, your fine grinds, that's for your espresso and your aeropress. And your ex extra, hello, extra fine, that's where you're looking at your Turkish coffees and your mocha pots. So, but some consistence that apply no matter what size, uh, where, what, what, your, what method are you're going to pick to brew. Um, all the methods use water just off the boil, anywhere from 195 degrees to 205 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, generally, you're using about a measure, a ratio of two tablespoons per six ounce of water, or if you're really getting precise, 25 grams per 400 grams of water. So, um, and so, how are you measuring? How are we measuring this? Well, you're measuring it basically um, on strength and flavor. Strength is determined by what's TDS, total dissolved solids. That's basically the amount of coffee that's actually dissolved into your water. Your flavor is determined by the extraction. How much has uh, flavor in that dissolving has been pulled out? Um, and if and this is where you get some really uh, interesting. Uh, uh, um, balance here, or if you don't get enough extraction, uh, your your taste is going to be greasy. If you get too much, you're going to get a bitter taste. Um, and some other factors that can affect extraction besides the size of your grind uh, um, is the finer the grind, the more extraction. Basically, the more surface, the finer the grind, you have more surface layer over all of your coffee, and you get more extraction. 
Um, also the hotter, wa hotter the water, the more extraction. And so you can actually play with the temperature of the water. Um, in the 1960s, so, you know, because they said, well, you know, really, what's the balance of this? How do I know what's the best balance? Well, uh, this guy, Ernest Lockhart, with the support of the National Coffee Association, developed the coffee brewing control chart, which uh, <laughs> I'm not, you know, shows the proper ratio of strength to extraction. Strength is on the y-axis, extraction is on the x-axis. And so the ideal balance between strength and extraction, you're looking at somewhere between one, um, I always have to look at these numbers, 1.2 TDS versus, uh, to 18 to 22 percent. Uh, extraction, sort of right there in the middle spot. So the coffee will stop being really over here on the right hand side? Exactly, yeah. Someone should let them know. Um, I'm not really sure. So now, if you really got an OCD about this, this is what you want to get the Extract Mojo. <laughs> <laughs> it uses a refractometer to uh, paired with, the, with that previous brewing chart to determine the exact. Uh, what your coffee is going to be before you even taste it. It will tell you if it's going to be good or not. For a mere $749, you can get that thing on the top. Now, if you're, not, if you're a little more frugal, <laughs> you can get the Mojo to go for the iPhone, which uses the camera, um, the, some of the high resolution cameras, a substitute. That's just $29. Or well, you can use Instagram for free, and all your friends will tell you what it's going to take. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> so let's talk about the different uh, brewing. There's kind of two different methods. You're either doing a full immersion or a filter type brewing method. Um, the AeroPress is interesting because it's a bit of a hybrid between the two. The full immersion is where you're soaking the beans. That's generally where you have the more coarser grinds. The filter method is where you have the finer grinds and um, with the fil um, with, or the coffee is more passing through so you want a faster uh, extraction off the grinds. Um, some of the other methods, uh, some of the more exotic things that we have, you know, so obviously you have here the, the coffee press, the bottom is the AeroPress, the one in the middle here is um, Cafe Solo. Um, on the top is what's called a Chemex. It's a filter method which is very similar to a pour over, um, which is on the bottom right there. Uh, some of the more exotic ones you can get, uh, work out and purchase is a Mono Caffino, and the, the, uh, which is uh, more of an immersion method again with a, a filter type mechanism. The Bodum Pibo, which uh, where you're actually boiling the water and it forces it up through the coffee, which is similar to the way the uh, the vacuum pot works in a, in a sort of a reverse method. There's the mocha pot, which makes almost espresso-like coffee, um, and then at the bottom right, something called a clever, which is similar to a pour-over, except um, it'll it acts like an immersion because it sits there and it, it doesn't actually pour the water out until you put it on the cup. Then you know if you know the serve and pour type of coffee makers, similar. Once you tap it on, then the water, then the coffee drains out through the filter. If I just get a curing, I'm good, right? Yep. N no. <laughs> Didn't you see the X at the beginning? <laughs> um, just for coffee for the win. So one thing. Um, now, one thing I, uh, that really wasn't talking about is the drip makers and um, the drip coffee makers. The, the challenge with drip coffee makers is most of them do not get your water to the right temperature um, to uh, properly extract the co uh, coffee uh, flavor and the strength out of the, out of the grinds. And so you end up really with a, a, a wide variety of quality of coffee out of a ca coffee maker. If you want to uh, purchase a coffee, a drip coffee maker that is actually does well. You're usually going to end up spending a hundred and one dollars, and I haven't, I have heard of people talk to people who spent well over five hundred dollars for a quality drip coffee maker. Um, <laughs> so some things about brewing. So you want to always start with the clean equipment. Um, your clean, you know, where you're, you've cleaned out your as much as possible your your grinder, your and your whatever you're using to brewer. You want a, a timer and a digital scale, and you want to aim for an accurate, repeatable process. Um, ideally, you also want to kettle with some kind of temperature control, so you know exactly uh, what temperature you've you've uh, heated your water to. Um, so. 
Um, now, I the interesting thing is talk about you know uh, talk about Rob's allu uh, allusion to the fact that this may take must take forever. I've been using this method for the past week as I've been refining my my presentation uh, with a coffee press. I found that um, once you nail down everything if you have all the equipment it really hasn't taken me much longer to to make a cup of coffee with a coffee press using these me this method than normally it does and the coffee is you know more is is pretty good so for, for people who don't drink coffee how long is that about Seriously. uh l probably t including heating the water probably about 10 minutes total okay. so huh <laughs> so uh so you know, normally, basically, I start heating the water. I grab my beans, measure out 25 grams on my digital scale, heat my water with just hot tap water, um, measure out 400 grams of hot water as well, so it's sitting on the side. Um, especially once, once that water hits the right temperature, you know, uh, measure out that 400 grams, pour it into my French press with the with the grinds. Set my digital timer because I hate sit staring at a clock. Um, once my timer goes off, enjoy my coffee. <laughs> so um, this method works pretty well. Now I will tell you all those uh, all those different brew brew methods uh, I showed you a few slides ago. There are dozens, if not hundreds, of recipes and recipes of for each of these. With the AeroPress, I was surprised they have an international contest for the best AeroPress brewing method. I'm like, exactly how many different methods can you use with this? But apparently enough that they actually have an international contest and online flame wars over it. Okay, well. It's probably worth noting that depending on method you're going to use, you're going to want to use different means. So for example, if you're using the Guatemalan with an AeroPress, you're going to have just a very, very subtle flavor. Most of the uh, flavonoids are going to be removed. You can have a, a coffee that has very little taste. You'd want to use something like a French press. So those are important things to remember, too. Depending on the bean, is going to dictate the bean. Wow, thank you for proving that I don't know nearly enough about <laughs> coffee. <laughs> 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 Okay, um, my demo was there. If anyone wants some of the references, that's there. So, with that said, that's my uh, that's my presentation. What? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Go, all right. so what temperature do you drink your coffee? Uh, I use about two hundred degrees for mine. Um, I don't. My kettle comes with like a two hundred degree and boil, that's and so that's so. The hell, that's the temperature which is being percolated if you were making it. But what about the end result? What temperature do you actually? Uh, do I drink? Yeah. Somewhere between not take the cover off the roof of my mouth and um, this is gross. <laughs> this has been a presentation of Nova Hackers, brought to you by ComputeCycle, a Cranial Thunder production.